Okay, we're going to look at problem 2165. If you look at 2165, it looks exactly like 64, except there's another added part to it. But we'll still draw the picture. So we have two masses, and they're on an incline. And what we're going to do at first is we're just going to ignore the second part of the problem. Now, last time we did this as a system. Today, I'm not going to do it as a system because we did the exact same thing last time. And I was looking at FRQs, and they specifically tell you to apply Newton's second law to each individual object not doing it as a system. So if you do it as a system on an FRQ, you're not going to get credit. So we're not going to do that, that that way this time. So what you do first is you draw your individual free body diagrams. So the, the one block, M2, this one's easy. You have the weight acting down, FG2, and then you have the tension going up. So remember, this is one rope so one rope means one tension okay so this tension here is the same throughout when I do draw the other one that's on an incline and this is the exact same problem we did last class here's my tension the key to doing these problems is your sign convention so normally this one would go like this so on this one, my sign convention is like this. So why is that important? Because if it's going to have the tendency to move this way, that means the frictional force acts opposite the direction of motion. My weight is going to go down, and then my normal force is going to act perpendicular to the surfaces in contact. Before I can start doing anything, I need to break my components up so the components here are perpendicular and parallel to the surfaces in contact. So if I just do here, this is where I start. So first I'm going to go perpendicular. From the head of this vector, I do the tail of the other because my components are perpendicular, so I see that angle there is theta. So when I look at the components, F, G1, Y is equal to M, G, cosine theta because it's adjacent to the given angle and FG1X is equal to M1G sine of theta. Now when I redraw this I have my tension which I haven't touched my normal force, which I haven't touched, my frictional force, but instead of the weight, I'm going to replace it now here with FG1Y and FG1X. So it's very important when I'm doing the components to make sure that they're going in the correct direction. All right. Now, what does this problem say? It says determine the largest possible M2 that will allow the system to remain at rest. So we already did this. So first of all, for it to remain at rest, and we're not doing it as a system, we're going to do it individually, at rest means that it's not moving. The acceleration is zero, but that means when I sum forces that the forces are zero. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do individually... Um, each of these. So I will do this one over here. When I look at my free body diagram here, so this is for block two, I'm going to say my sign convention is down. Summation of f of y is equal to m2a. But it's at rest, so this whole thing goes to zero. So now I look at the picture. FG2 is going down, so that's positive. The tension is going up, so that's negative, and that's equal to 
zero. So I know now that FG2 is equal to the tension. So that's M2G is equal to the tension. So that is applying Newton's second law to this mass, because that's what they want you to do on the AP test. Now we're going to apply Newton's second law to this mass. Now, first I'll do the vertical. Remember, I need to draw my sign convention. So I see here that going this way is positive. That's what I'm calling my x. And then perpendicular, that is my y. And that's what I'm calling positive. So when I, this is for block one, when I sum forces vertically, I get summation of f of y is equal to ma. Is this accelerating this way? It's not even moving that way. So that's equal to zero. So now I look at my picture. Fn is going up, so that's positive. So that's Fn minus Fg1y is equal to zero. So Fn is equal to Fg1y, which I already found here is M1g cosine theta. That's Fn. Now, again, for block one, I'm going to sum forces horizontally. Summation of F of X is equal to Ma, but it's in static equilibrium, so it's zero. Now I'm going to look at the, my free body diagram. So I up is positive this way, so T minus F of F minus Fg1x is equal to zero. So now I'm going to rearrange this and solve for T. So T is equal to F of F plus FGX. And I know what FGX, well, first I'm going to look at F of F. Well, I know that F of F is equal to mu times F of N. So F of F is equal to mu times F of N, which is M1G cosine of theta. So now I can substitute this in here. And then FGX1 I found there. So T is equal to F of F, which is mu M1G cosine of theta plus F FGX, which is going to be M1G sine of theta. So I can pull out, so that's going to be M1G mu cosine theta plus sine of theta. So now I'll substitute in my values. This is 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times parentheses mu, which is... Um, this is static, 0.2 times the cosine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 30 degrees. So when I do all this on my calculator, T comes out to be 19.7 newtons. Now that was actually the answer for part B. If we did it as a system, we could find part A first, because when you do it that way, you would be eliminating the tension, because the tensions are equal and opposite. Why are we doing it this way? We're doing it this way because on the FRQs, sometimes they ask you to apply Newton's second law to each block individually, and that's what doing it this way means. Now I can go back, and I can do part A, and part A says find the mass. So from here, I know that M2 is equal to T over G, which would be 19.7 newtons over 9.8 meters per second squared. So M2 is equal to 2.01.
kilograms. Now we have the rest of the problem. So the block slides down here for part C, and it wants to know from here to here, this is two meters, what's its velocity here, VF? All right. Well, this string is cut, so now there's no longer any tension. So what we have to do is we have to actually draw a new free body diagram. So here's my same block. Because it's moving this way, that means the frictional force goes in the opposite direction. So this is F of F, and then the component of the weight here is going to be FGX. So that's what I'm going to do to solve for this, for part C. So I'm going to, again, to the left is positive, so I'm going to first show my sign convention. I'm going to say summation of F of X is equal to MA. I'm going to look at my forces, so FGX is positive, because that's according to my sign convention. Minus F of F is equal to MA. I want to solve for the speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline, okay? Well, in order to find the speed, which is VF, no matter what kinematic equation I use, I'm going to have to find the acceleration. So we're using our free body diagrams to solve for A. So I'm going to rearrange the equation and say FGX minus F of F over M is equal to A. So now I'll do MG sine of theta minus mu MG cosine theta over M. If I was smart, I maybe would have solved for F of F before, but I didn't do that. My M's cancel out. So now I'll substitute in my values. So A is going to be 9.8 times the sine of 30 minus 0.1. Now it's moving, so we're using our kinetic friction times the cosine of 30. So when I do all this, the acceleration comes out to be 4.05 meters per second squared. Okay, part D says how far does it go? So once this part has no friction, so the speed here is going to be the same here, then it's going to go off the edge and it's going to be a projectile. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw myself a little picture. There's no friction when it leaves the edge, so it's the same. So the picture is going, this is just the bottom half. So now it's leaving with this velocity. So the final velocity, oh, I didn't find the final velocity. Whoops. So to find the final velocity, V naught is zero, VF we want to find, and the X is equal to two. So I'm going to say VF squared is equal to V naught squared plus two AX. So VF is equal to the square root of all that, V naught squared plus two AX. So VF is equal to the square root, V naught is zero because this starts from rest once it's cut. So it's going to be 2 times 4.05 times 2 meters. So VF comes out to be 4.02 meters per second. So this velocity here, it's going to stay the same. There's no friction. And this now becomes a projectile. So that final velocity is the initial here, and then it goes like this. So what I want to do here is I just want to find out what this x is. So now it's a projectile. So remember, with a projectile, I can write my x and y given. So ax is 0, g is negative 9.8, this is all horizontal, so VIX is equal to 4.02, VIY is 0, and then they tell us this vertical displacement Y is negative 1.4 meters. So now it's a projectile, so Y is V naught YT plus 1 half GT squared. This goes to 0. 
So y is 1 half gt squared. I'm going to rearrange the equation for the unknown in terms of known. So t is equal to 2y over g, which is the square root of 2 times negative 1.4 over negative 9.8. So my time comes out to be 0 0.535 seconds. And then the last thing I do is I say x is equal to v naught xt, which is 4.02 meters per second times 5.35 seconds, which is 2.15 meters. So the first part of this problem we did previously, the only difference here was now we had some values because the last time we had it without numbers, and then at the end it became a projectile. And this is typical physics C type problems where you have different parts. First you're using, let's say, Newton's laws. Then you're going to be using kinematics. And then you're going to be doing projectile motion. So you have a bunch of different things in one particular problem. And that's it. You just have to do it step by step.